city in the nation's capital. New legislation, new growth targets, and new reforms. From monetary to physical to foreign policy. From improving living standards to development initiatives. We'll show you the challenges and opportunities facing China in its new era of openness. Join CGTN's coverage of this year's two sessions as our integrated media platforms and international reporting team brings you in-depth analysis of decisions impacting China and the world. CGTN and the two sessions, 2019. Well, as we promised, the CGTN's uh, digital team is joining us now. We're breaking down the walls between TV studio and our social media newsroom. Whether you're with us on this channel or on CGTV, uh, CGTN's uh, mobile app, you will have a 360-degree view of all the events currently going on in China. With me in the studio is my colleague uh, Jing Ying Chiao. And over there in our digital newsroom is CGTN's uh, social media editor, Marco Shan. We'll start with you, Marco. Uh, what do you have in store for us today? Uh, thank you, Dongling. And hello, everyone. This is Marco live from the CGTN Digital's newsroom. And as always, let's kick off today's report with an update on what's happening here. We're now into the final days of our two sessions coverage, and we have received many comments and reactions from our followers on various social media platforms. Today, the main focus of our website is China's effort to improve the quality and efficiency of intellectual property law. In our other original stories, let's start with our high-end interview series, Boss Talk. In today's episode, we interview the president of Thermo Fisher Scientific's China branch. The company entered the Chinese market 35 years ago and remains confident about its future here in China. Meanwhile, in our opinion section, there are two original stories that will be published very soon, which will be about how China is using innovation and what China's strategies are for dealing with aging society. Now, let's head to the TV studio for more exciting stories. Hai Yingqiao, please tell us more. Thank you, Marco. And here's what you don't want to miss on CGTN's TV. Now, this morning, the National People's Congress meets again to hear the report from the Supreme People's Court and the Supreme People's Procuratorate. Delegations from across China will examine reports and law drafts. CGTN's Ho Na has got it all covered. And Tong Bo asks officials from China's Intellectual Property Bureau on doubts about China's IPR protections. Check CGTN's website and app for the latest. This afternoon, officials from the Supreme People's Court and Provincial People's Court will meet the press on how to better enforce local uh, court verdicts. And Ho Na is also there. And also today, we'll air CGTN's Liu Yang story of Panda Mom, an NPC deputy and head of the Panda Breeding Research Center in southwest China. And lastly, our reporter Wu Guoxiu examines the proposals submitted by MPC deputies. Dongning. Really looking forward to all those coverages and stories, especially the Panda Mom, indeed. It should be very interesting. Oh, Marco, uh, tell us what uh, specials do you have? Okay, Dongning. Today I've got an interesting video titled, What's Driving China's Strides in Innovation? Some say China is a copycat, but there are others who admire China's great leaps in science and technology. One very recent achievement that China is taking pride in is the Chang'e 4 lunar probe soft landing on the far side of the moon, the first such landing in human history. Besides for that, homegrown tech now allows people to commute using shred bicycles, pay by scanning QR codes, shop through their smartphones, and travel on high-speed trains. But how did China reach this stage? Well, China realized it needed innovation to continue developing, and the country invested heavily in this field. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics show that China's total investment in research and development was 1.75 trillion yuan in 2017, making the country the world's second largest spender on R&D after the United States. So let's hand back to the TV studio for more. Thank you, Marco. And here are some highlights from what we aired. Now, following up on doubts of China as a copycat, our reporter Tang Bo brought us this answer. This year's work report mentioned fully enhancing the protection for intellectual property. What solid measures will you take to do this? 
Last year, we managed to compress the vetting time for trademark registration to six months. This year's target is five. In the latest draft amendment for patent law, we want to raise the maximum fine for international infringement to five times the value of the patent. These are very strict regulations, even by international standards. We are also expecting the IPR protection centers to make sure patents of Chinese businesses are well protected. And today on CGTN Probes, reporter Xu Mengqi tells us about China's emerging social credit system. It improves government governance, but it's also been viewed by some as controversial as it tracks how you pay off debts and your social behavior. Now, see the full the picture. Now, let's check out see a website and app. And lastly, on global business, we aired a studio interview where our expert guest weighed in on the role of Chinese universities in pushing innovation. Dong Ning. Thank you very much, uh, Ying Jiao. Well, Marco, uh, today we are now joined in the studio by Professor Wu Jun. He is a professor, uh, he's a research fellow and associate professor at the Institute of Law from the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. I know you've been there trying to find out the major concerns that people are having on social media. Uh, tell us more, uh, s tell us uh, some of the frequently asked questions and pick one for our guest. And thank you to Donny and uh, my pleasure. So Professor, uh, Professor Wu, so first of all, I'd like to ask you a question we got from the online Q&A platform Quora. So one person asked, do Chinese courts respect and enforce intellectual property rights for the foreign nationals and their patents? All right, Professor Wu, intellectual property rights for, foreigner, for foreigners in China. Uh, thank you for this question. I think this is a good question and a quite uh, simple question. Uh, China court gave the same, if not the high, protection to the foreign investors. I say it because historically our country put great emphasis on attract the foreign investors. So to attract them, also the judicial organ also pay attention to safeguard their rights, especially IP rights. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, as a foreign investors in the uh, reforming earlier er years, they attract the most professional attorneys uh, from the law firms mm -hmm. because they pay a lot. They also have a systematically safeguarding system uh, to implement it in locally. So in this sense, uh, practically they have a mechanism available. Secondly, because the judges are quite the independent, independently can deliver their judgment, mm -hmm. they also regard foreign investors as a valuable uh, input in our economy that treat foreign, in foreign investment as the natural investment because we have natural treatment there. Mm -hmm. they, they should uh, abide by that. I think this uh, is the answer. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Marco, it seems, uh, well, uh, to me at least, uh, that um, uh, Professor Wu's answer has, uh, has made sure that uh, foreign investors are going to be well protected in terms of intellectual property rights there. All right, uh, Marco, what's your next question? All right, thank you. And my, my second question is from, or Ask China series. So do you think, are, are you for or against the trend nowadays of publishers setting up paywalls to read articles online? Do you think that kind of protects the uh, intellectual property rights of these authors? Right, uh, very interesting question. Indeed, a lot of people are asking that as well. Paying to the authors online, is it, uh, is it a right way to protect intellectual property rights? I think there is uh, two folds. Uh, uh, th there is a strong point because mm -hmm. it encourages the individual to write for uh, immediate profit and encourages uh, those who specialize in writing, in research, to write and research more. So it's quite uh, good to encourage those who are specialized in this. But uh, the other thing is that because they paid for this kind of uh, uh, thesis, writings, artif uh, articles, or some art artistic expressions. So these publishers will control their uh, availability to the general public. This, to some degree, will hide the development of this whole uh, level up of public uh, spiritual mm -hmm. advancement. Mm -hmm. But I think it's not an uh, uh, issue specific to China. I think it's an issue specific to the whole legal system, especially mm -hmm. IP system. Mm -hmm. 
protection system. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Professor Wu Jun from uh, Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. And many thanks uh, to my colleagues as well, uh, Jean Chow in the studio and uh, Marco from the digital uh, department indeed. Uh, Global Watch and uh, CGTN's uh, new media team will continue to bring you the latest on China's annual political season as it still continues. And we have more stories on um, the two, ses two sessions later on uh, in today's program as well. Uh, live coverage, as always, will also be available on the CGTN app. And now let's uh, turn to the latest in Venezuela. A power station has exploded in Caracas as days of nationwide power cuts imposed increasing hardship on the country. And this has also intensified the political crisis there, with President Maduro blaming the U.S., while the opposition points the finger at Venezuela's own government. CGTN Stephen Gibbs reports. Shortly before dawn here in Caracas, there was a major explosion in the western part of the city. That was because a transformer, uh, it seemed, had a surge of power which it couldn't cope with and exploded. Now, this is a result of what the government here, the authorities, are attempting to do, and that is try and get the, make sure that the capital at least has power after a 75